So it's a time for a package from China. Yeah, so we're going to talk about this absolutely beast of a portable device when it comes to retro gaming and also arcade. <laughs> There are many different ways to play nowadays and this is one of those many ways but it also comes with a built-in Pi because this is the portable Pi. Yeah. So let's take a close look at the first one. You have all kinds of different versions when it comes to the button configuration, the joysticks but also when you're looking at the kind of software you're going to get. Both devices will come with the same kind of parts and I mean with parts extra buttons and a screwdriver because you need to assemble the ball top and tighten it up. Then of course we're going to get ourselves like the 12 volt power supply with a very long cord and a barrel jack connection because this is needed for powering on the device itself. But let's take a close look at the machine itself because that thing is quite nice. Very nice. I like it. I like it a lot. The case design is something they have been reusing for quite a long time now. But they did upgrade the internal parts. So one of the features I think is pretty damn cool that we can also use the HDMI port for having different options. So at the back we're going to find ourselves different connections. We have an audio jack out, of course the input for the battle jack connection, the power, the 12 volt, the SD card, depending what kind of model and of course what kind of brand because this is using, I think it's original SanDisk, but this is the Ultra 128 gigabyte. And over here we're going to get different connections. Yeah, it's just the Pi actually that you're going to get at the back, but we do have like four ports that we can use for extra controllers. And of course the RG45 connection Ethernet for connecting it with internet. They also implemented an extra fan for getting some cooling. But the overall quality when it comes to the case, I really like it because it's made out of full of metal. Also when you're looking at the hinges over here, it's metal, so it's not like cheap plastic fantastic. The overall quality is really great to be honest. And of course, it's a portable device, so what you can do is removing, yeah, okay, removing, <clears throat> removing this cover, come on, there we go. And here we can implement the batteries, so make this thing really portable and giving you a couple of hours of playtime. The only downside is that we're not going to get ourselves most of the time batteries do, I think it's do with transport and batteries, it's not allowed. So what you're going to get is nothing, so you need to get yourself like these 18640 batteries. Take note, like finding original ones is going to be a challenge. So yeah, good luck with that. So I wish to just like implement them complete so it would be so much more easier just to plug and play, charge this thing and go. But how this case works is quite genius. You need to remove the ball top that also locks the system itself. You can just open it up. I must say there's quite a nice resistance to it so you don't need to be very like, say, afraid that it's going to be dropping down. And then we need to assemble the bar top. The ball top. I need the bar top, the ball top, but okay. The thing is, also where you're going to assemble the ball top and you want to tighten it up, you need to remove the four parkers over here. And that's the reason why you're going to get yourself like a screwdriver. Okay, but when you're looking at the device itself, you have different versions. So we have also like the full sandwich kit, but I think it's worth money because, you know, the joysticks they're using are okay. I do love to call them a wiggle stick because they don't have like a very nice feel to it like a Sanwa and the, yeah, the buttons man, the buttons. They are not super bad or something but I've been playing a lot with them but they do have like this very cheap feel click to it and a very long travel and I personally not the biggest fan of this. But let's take a close look at the other one. The configuration is almost the same when it comes to the case itself. But also the resistance when it comes to the hinges is all like all the same. It's exactly the same box. The biggest difference are the buttons and the joystick and I can tell you that a couple of dollars are asking in my opinion is really worth it. By the way you're looking at both of the freaking devices there is really minor difference especially when it comes to the joystick. The Sema plays a little bit better in my opinion and the buttons it's also like a personal preference. Some people really love like these very clicky and sensitive buttons. Some just want to have like the long travel. That is something you need to decide for yourself. But when looking both devices, yeah, there is not like a big of a difference beside the joystick and the buttons. The display are mostly the same, so what I understand of the same kind of a case. Yeah, the other thing is we have like different sizes when it comes to the image or at least the SD card itself. And not to forget, some of them will run with Recall Box. The Raspberry Pi 4 combined with this portable casing is the ultimate way to have your retro games on the go. And of course you're having handheld, but for let's say a mini arcade that is pretty damn awesome. 
because the Raspberry Pi 4 is just one mean retro emulation machine. This is giving us way new possibilities for emulating, let's say, newer systems like Dreamcast, PSP, PlayStation 1. A lot of systems that were not running very good or not at all on the Raspberry Pi number 3. So that is a big improvement. curious how PSP is going to run so we're going to try out a three-dimensional game but did notice that there's quite some sound difference between the emulators so that's a little bit of a disappointment the thing that I find the Pi 4 interesting for is that you can play Sega Dreamcast nowadays. So that is something that we're going to try out and let's see how good it runs on the little Pi Portable. With round two, we are going to switch with the HDMI to TV out. So let's see how that looks. Dual display, I must say, it runs pretty smooth. Time for some more to come out on the arcade and let's see how it runs with the dual display. It's running very well but what you can see with the Sega Dreamcast not all the games are configured correctly. So I recommend just use an external controller for some games like Daytona. Here we have the Raspberry Pi number 4, this is the 4GB edition. I don't know if the cell with the 8GB but not really necessary for the retro emulation. Here you can see there are quite some components hooked up to the Raspberry Pi. Also for the dual HDMI out. So nevertheless it's quite interesting seeing all of these parts inside. And it's not really an easy plug and play like a Pandora Box Portable. But with the Pandora Box Portable, most of the time only having a Pandora Box inside and that's it. But here you can see, there is quite a cable nightmare. And the PCB that you're seeing over there is for the 7 inch monitor. So there was not a lot of information about the monitor. So I was thinking, do you know what? Let's open it up and I can show you how you need to replace the monitor. Because with all these portable Pi systems, they are all using the same 7 inch displays that are connected with the little PCB inside that I already shown you before. And when you remove the four little screws, you can see you're just going to have to lift out the display itself. So what I really like about it is that you can just replace the LCD monitor very easily. But this model is a very common model and if you search it on AliExpress, you can see that it is not a very expensive display. 
It's a very common version that I will use in most of these portable devices and has a resolution of 800 by 480. But don't get me wrong, even for a lower resolution monitor, it looks very nice. I think it's really cool. And if you look at the colors, everything looks vibrant and colorful. So if it comes to the display itself, I think it's pretty good. So if you need to do some maintenance, you can just very easily remove the control panel and get into the system itself. All right, so let's put it back together and let's look at the games and what can I do? Where I am not the biggest fan of a Raspberry Pi inside a portable, I think it's a very cool configuration, especially with the Pi 4. You can run so much more than let's say some of the Pandora's boxes. And of course the emulation performance is so much better here and there. Let me know in the comments what do you think of a Pi inside the box, bring it with you with this kind of a portable arcade. Thanks for watching, consider subscribing, hit the little bell and it would be great to see you in the next video.